Hello everyone and welcome to a new tutorial on this channel. So from now on I'm gonna actually upload a little bit more tutorials. Uh, sorry for being slow the last two years. <laughs> yeah, but the thing is I have a new concept. We're gonna look at doing animations which is pretty advanced and usually are done in such advanced programs as Houdini and I'm gonna try to recreate them in Cinema 4D. So we're gonna start off with this. So as you saw, uh, we're gonna try to make these kind of pillows. And I actually didn't uh, figure out this myself. Uh, I figured out how to make it in Cinema 4D, but the original idea comes from this guy uh, called Honair on Instagram. If you don't follow him, go on and follow him. He makes great animations. And he actually made this one. Uh, he was collabing with this guy called Paul S. Steves. Uh, together they made this awesome animation, which is made in Houdini. And since I don't know Houdini and I really like this animation, I decided to try to make it in Cinema 4D and this is what the result was. So I hope you like it and let's go on into Cinema 4D and start doing this. So we're in Cinema 4D and uh, what you will need for this tutorial is Octane. Uh, without Octane you won't be able to do this. Uh, you will be able to do the pillow but the texturing and stuff like that and scattering you will need to have Octane too. So let's get started. We're gonna start by making a cube and I'm gonna put the lines mode on here. Uh, we want the height to be three by the cube and we want to have segments 60 to by 60, uh, like that. Once you made that, we wanna put a cloth tag on that and this is all gonna be our pillow. Put a cloth tag and we can make this uh, 120 the timeline 120 frames and I'm gonna go ahead and save this project as tutorial there we go so I'm gonna put a yeah we put a cloth tag on this and we're gonna go over here and I have some settings that I know work uh, first off if you just start this nothing will happen because we have to make this editable once it's edible, if we just press play, it will just fall down. And that's because we have this force gravity, which we want to put to zero. Uh, if we just put now, nothing happens, because we have no forces which are interacting with the cloth dynamics. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and we're going to go to simulate. And we're going to put a tractor on here. Uh, a tractor, like, it either attracts something or pushes it away. Uh, it depends on your uh, value over here. And we're gonna put uh, minus, oh sorry, negative 3500. And if we play now, you will see this super weird uh, effect. But this is gonna be like, this is gonna make our pillow fill up with air. So let's go into the cloth tag and change some settings. First off, we want to have the iterations 200, uh, which is going to make this a little bit more stiff. And uh, it's already looking kind of like a pillow. So we're just going to change a few settings that I already know uh, are works, works great. We're going to change the flexion to 85, rubber to 5, and uh, use the size to 101 to get a little bit bigger size of this. So it looks kind of thick. And then we're gonna go over to forces and we're gonna put some drag so it doesn't fly around too much. We want it to the air to be a little bit like repulsive, I wanna say. I don't know. Uh, yeah, that looks kind of great actually. Already. And the thing we wanna do now is we actually can. I like this animation, but it lags too much in the viewport. So we're gonna go over to the cloth tag. And press on cache and we're gonna press on cache mode and then calculate cache and this can take some while if you have a slow computer uh, but just wait and it will be great and it will be a much more flexible to work in your viewport when you have cached so yeah and there we go we're done and if we oops go ahead and press play now you will see our pillow but as you see, in the end of the timeline, it starts to move away, and that's because the attractor uh, is uh, the attractor is like it's it's 
it's still blowing once it has blowed up the pillow has blowed up it's still blowing and we don't need the attractor to be on after like yeah 35 because all the animation on the pillow had already happened at 35 so what we're gonna do is we're gonna remove everything after 35 uh, and since it's cached we can also make this to keyframes so go over to timeline and drag the cube over here press on it go to functions bake objects and press in PLA here and press OK and what will happen now is that we will get a new cube which is already having this all animated without any tags in keyframes instead so we can actually go ahead and delete this now and delete the attractor and if you press play now we have this pillow animation and since we have it all in keyframes we can go over to timeline again and we can actually delete all the keyframes after 35 so go ahead and just mark that and press delete so now it will look like this and then it just will stop so uh, we're done here we have this pillow animation but now we want it to like fly up and bounce as we saw in the, in this video or like actually, actually like jumping up and bouncing so to do that we have to first off have a plane and since we're gonna play around with uh, I'm just gonna rename this to pillow since we're gonna play around with uh, soft body dynamics now we will need to have we can't put a plane and put a collider tag on that because uh, it's yeah I don't know why actually but it's cinema 40 dynamics sometimes don't work so I'm gonna take a cube instead and put it uh, down and we will need to use the front mode put it underneath the pillow yeah, like so it makes minus 102 centimeters so it's underneath you see this little gap and then we will put a collider tag on that one yes yeah, so I'm gonna put this collider tag over here and then we're gonna go up to the pillow and we're gonna put a soft body collider uh, and as you know we have a pretty pretty much uh, segments over here and when you're messing with soft body colliders uh, soft body dynamics uh, in Cinema 4D it can take a lot of your uh, computer's power so if you just want to watch how I did it you can just follow along and just type in all the settings and then just go ahead and cache bef even don't like try to press it in the viewport because it will lag super much so you can just decide however you want uh, so first off we're gonna change the collision settings uh, we want it to bounce a little but not too much and we want a lot of friction and then we're gonna put the shape to mode dynamic we want to go back here and we want to put the same values which was 10 bounds and 70 friction and there we go and then we're gonna go over here to soft body and we're gonna go here and we're gonna put some settings in here and I'm just gonna type the settings that I know work because this took a, took a lot of time to to figure out but what I can give you advice is that structural and shape conservation stiffness is the most uh, that's the setting that matters the most so let's see here 50 20 that's right 50 20 180 120 120 we want to put 20 yeah that thing I think that will do it actually and if I just press play here it's gonna like super much in my viewport so I know I already know this these settings work so I can actually just start caching but before we cache if we just play now it will actually bounce up and then go down and if you watch in this video you see that they're actually moving and rotating a little bit in the air and to do that we will actually use a a turbulence effector so to do this we will go over here and this will like make some turbulence in the air so we'll put 50 at the scale and we will use 60 as strength and I will actually yes do it I will do a keyframe here at 34 and at 35 I don't want any strength anymore like that and now I can go ahead and press on soft body dynamics and bake object 
and now we will have to wait a while but we will come back once this is done and you will see how it looks so now the baking is done and that took about five minutes on my computer it could probably take a bit longer on your computer or faster and uh, yeah so let's watch this and now it looks like this that's super nice I really like that and as you see it's rotating a bit uh, to the right uh, or left I don't know how you tell it by <laughs> when it's turning uh, however we, we will uh, later on scatter these and to get some variation I also want one of these to turn the other way so to do that we're actually gonna first off I want to make the pillow to keyframes once again so I'm gonna go up to my timeline and we're gonna put my pillow over here and I'm gonna go to bake object PLA and press OK uh, once it's done baking we will have a new pillow and we will call this pillow turning I don't know I'm just gonna call this left I don't know if you, even if it's turning left but whatever and then we're gonna go over here we're gonna go back and we're gonna clear the cache uh, clear clear and then we're gonna go to turbulence and we're gonna turn it 180 degrees which is gonna make it turn the other way now so we're actually gonna go through this again and just bake it so there we go and now I'm back again and now if we watch this is turning the other way if you watch this one they're turning multiple ways, which is great. So, just go back to the one you just cached and <clears throat> do the same thing we did before. Put it in there. Oops, sometimes you have to take another timeline. I think this is the one. So, go over here to Big Objects, PLA. And we have a copy here, and I'm gonna turn this and uh, name this Pillow turning right Boom. and we can actually delete the rest now and since we have now we have one which is turning this way and one which is turning that way and none of these are taking up much space in the viewport so now we can actually start making this look great and first off we want to put these in nulls so we can control uh, control the rotation of them. So I'm gonna put each of the pillows in a control null. And we can make both visible. And we're actually gonna go ahead and go to plugins, uh, Octane, and put these in a scatter node. And uh, we have to scatter them on something. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna make a plane. I'm gonna make that 1000 by 1000 and we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna choose vertex as the distribution mode like that and what that is gonna make is it's gonna distribute on every point of the surface which in this case is the plane so I'm gonna call this floor uh, scatter space over there floor scatter so if we go over to a live viewer now and watch this you won't see much because it's scattering all over the surface and they're way too big so we're gonna go to MoGraph and we're gonna go and click plane go over to the octane scatter and manually put this in go over to the plane turn off position turn on scale uniform scale and scale them down a lot and they're a little bit too many so we can go over here and we can change how many they are depending on the segments and I'm gonna go by 13 which makes us able to turn up the scale a bit there we go and if you watch now we'll see here so the pillows don't go through the floor which they're not this is actually great so if we watch now they're just jumping up at the same time no not quite but almost the same time 
and it looks very a lot because it's just two different pillows so what we'll have to do is that we will have to uh, take these two and just hold control and drag to make two copies and of course you can make how many copies you want but for this tutorial I'm gonna make just four of these and uh, if you want more variation you can make how many you want and we go, will go to these and we'll make uh, rotate them a little bit so they're different so minus 90 and minus 180 and minus 270 and this we will just make 90 so you won't probably notice it now but they're turning different ways and now there is four of them and to make them not jump up all at the same time you will go up here to timeline and you can just go ahead and drag all of these just go ahead select and select children put them over here and scale this up a bit and as you see these are the four and they're almost jumping up at the same time but go ahead and drag to make them jump up at different times so if we watch now they're jumping up a little bit different so that is great and that's what we want so to make this beautiful we will use uh, path tracing and I'm gonna go over here I'm gonna change the max samples to 500 and the GI clamp to 1 and I'm gonna go over to denoiser and enable that later on and that makes us be able to check here how it looks without noise or with the denoiser which is a great tool and uh, we can actually go ahead and as you saw in my tutorial uh, in my sorry in my preview uh, they were like uh, going from one way to another and we can actually make that with a plane so go over to position and make the y position zero and as you see when I move this they're moving so we're gonna make it uh, move from frame zero we're gonna make it move we can actually jump into a camera first and make it a 135 millimeters uh, sorry we're gonna do like this we're gonna fast forward a little bit to something like that looks kind of good and we're gonna go to the plane and we're gonna see how much we can take from 90 oops gonna take 90 to uh, sorry negative 90 to <whistles> 200 will be great and we will want we want to make this animation linear so there is no easing going on and as you see now they're jumping up and we have this cool sliding animation so we're gonna go to the texturing and first off we're gonna drop down an HDRI environment and put in a HDRI I already have one which I really like uh, and if you don't have one and need to find one for free there is a website called HDRI, uh, HDRI Haven, which is really great. I use it all the time, and we have this great. It's already already looking great, uh, but we will need some materials. So I'm gonna put a diffuse material and call this first, and we will put this on one of the control. And first off, we will make a color so we can see which are affected, and jump out of the camera and go to a pillow so we can see what we're doing. Jump into the node editor and uh, we're gonna do some stuff in here. So first off we will need, we, I, I'm gonna make this so it looks like velvet and we will need a mix texture for that. I'm gonna put that in the diffuse button over there and we will use a fall off and this tag is really important to make it look like velvet. Uh, I don't know how it's making it look like velvet but it makes it look really good so we'll use two RGB spectrum which is which is gonna be the colors so uh, the one on the bottom is gonna be white and the other one is gonna be uh, in this case blue 
and we will make it a little bit darker and you see it almost looks like velvet already uh, but I'm gonna use a normal texture as well and I already have one uh, which I made myself in Substance Designer uh, looks kinda kinda like velvet and I will put this one and a uh, a similar one which is uh, for displacement in the description of this video and I actually learned how to make this in Substance Designer by watching Philip Huda's YouTube tutorial so be sure to check that out and as you see now it looks like velvet it's really cool and we're gonna make four different of these so hold control while dragging and we're gonna name this second third and fourth and I'm just gonna fast change the colors on these uh, let's see here make it darker and make it lighter like that and we will put these on the other pillows Control over there and over there and over there. Oops. And let's see how this looks. Not really great with a purple one, so I'm gonna change that one real fast to a white. A little bit gray, maybe. Hmm. Well, you can play around with this till, till it looks good. Uh, I think that looks kind of good. Yeah, I'm gonna settle with that. Uh, obviously you have to play around with this to find your own fun color. And uh, jump into the camera again. And we're gonna make the floor a bit darker. So make a new material, call it floor. Put it on the floor. And make some dark gray. Maybe not that dark. And yeah. And I actually want to make a light also. So make an area light and turn it like 90 degrees. And I'm gonna make it a bit smaller. And I'm gonna put it over here. Make it a little bit higher, like that. Uh, and of course, I could play around with this forever. But since this is just a tutorial, I'm gonna leave it like that. And as you see, when they're jumping now, we have this cool animation. And that looks really good for me, and I feel like I could do a million stuff to make it look better, uh, but just play around and this is the general concept. And if you would like to the pillows to have a greater, like, greater geom uh, geometry, you could actually use, uh, I'd use first a cloth surface to get some detail. Uh, I just did like this cloth surface with one subdivision and then I used uh, a subdivision surface with one as well uh, and put them like this and that gave me a little bit better you know, uh, a cooler look on the pillows well let's see yeah it gives the wrinkles a bit, bit better look uh, so try that if you want but other than that, I think we're done actually. You can also play around with uh, with uh, the cameras, making a, if you put an octane tag on that, and turning off the autofocus, pulling up the aperture a bit, and going over here and make focus in the middle, you will have this cool depth of field look, which I had in the preview. So, but that's about that I think guys. Hope you liked this tutorial and uh, I will see you in the next one. Comment and like and don't forget to subscribe. See you!